Hello everyone, my name is Blaine Pearson and I'm an instructor in Texas Tech's Personal Financial Planning Program. In this video, we're going to review how to calculate and interpret the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio. In calculating the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio, we first need to look at the formula. For those of you who are taking this investments class, or for those of you who are sitting for the CFP exam, this formula is provided. This formula tells us what the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio is. It does this by taking the weighted average of each individual standard deviation, and then it also considers the covariance, or how those two asset standard deviations move together. The easiest way to understand this is to look at an example. Let's say you have a client that has 50% of the portfolio in U.S. stocks. 50% of the portfolio is in international stocks. The standard deviations of the U.S. international stocks are 15 and 20% respectively. The correlation coefficient between the two funds is 0.7. What is the standard deviation of this portfolio? So to begin, let's bring up the formula that we had on the prior page. From here, let's substitute our weights. The W is the weight. So how much each one of these weights and the respective deviations are what we set here. So for instance, this particular example has 50% in US stock and 50% international stock. So these two W's turn into 0.5 squared and 0.5 squared. Just to make things easier, I like to go ahead and solve that. So 0.25 and 0.25. Next, we can substitute the standard deviations, so 15 and 20, for the sigma squares. Interestingly enough, we are given the correlation coefficient. However, the formula calls for the covariance. You are given this formula on the CFP exam. To calculate the covariance, you can take the correlation coefficient and times it by the two standard deviations. The correlation coefficient is 0.7. We can take 0.7 and times it by the two standard deviations of 15 and 20 to give us a covariance of 210. Substituting the covariance, the formula should look like this. Reducing this further, we get the standard deviation here. And then one more time in the final bullet point, we'll then take the square root of that to get our standard deviation. So first we convert our standard deviation of variances by squaring them then we have to take the square root to get it back to the standard deviation. The one thing you may notice is the solution falls between 15 and 20 percent. This makes sense because the minimum it could be is 15 and the maximum it could be is 20. Again, this is Blaine Pearson and in this video we covered how to calculate the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio. Thank you for watching.